Hey, John Ojaka here from Music Marketing Manifesto, and I recently set out to create a full-length music video for one of my songs using nothing but AI. And I'm gonna share that process with you. I'm gonna show you the tools I use. I'm gonna lay out some basic workflows, and then I'm gonna show you the actual music video that I made so that you can see what you think and really kind of get a sense of what's possible currently using uh, AI video generation tools. Now, first, a little bit about uh, the current state of uh, AI video generation. Now, um, most of you are probably familiar with image generation tools like Dolly and Midjourney, which came out last year and really hit their stride uh, only about six or seven months ago. They were quickly followed by a fleet of additional image generation tools, uh, but also the emergence of video generation tools. Most notably, uh, we saw Gen 1 from Runway Labs emerge and Kyber, two very different tools um, that created very different products. Uh, Kyber used uh, a technique that essentially used uh, text or an image as the prompt for an initial image that would then become the seed for the next frame, which would become the seed for the next frame. And you had this constantly evolving, almost psychedelic, uh, very interesting, at times beautiful, uh, video that had its merits, but was hard to control and hard to use for precise storytelling. Conversely, uh, Gen 1 was much better at creating videos that looked somewhat realistic, had smooth transitions from frame to frame, but it was very prone to being, frankly, somewhat disturbing at times. And now both tools have evolved a lot. There's now Gen 2, which is much better than Gen 1, but still full of many of the same problems. And um, Kyber has e evolved to have additional features and additional controls, but it still has some of the same limitations. Um, more recently, we've seen uh, tools like Pika Lab, emerge which are great at creating very realistic videos um, but they're short and the movements are much more minimal um, and there's an array of additional tools that you can use in conjunction with with some of these tools or in place of some of these tools to create some extremely compelling stuff especially when they're used together now it really depends on what you're ultimately trying to do do you just need a quick video clip to support your music or are you trying to create a, a complex story or music video um, more akin to something we might shoot in the real world now that is what I did and I think it's important that you view uh, the video that I'm going to share with you in that context because I felt it was somewhat ambitious I didn't just generate a bunch of uh, video and then string it together in an interesting way I began with a concept and I attempted to use AI tools to effectively replace my real-world workflow were I to go out and shoot a video um, you know, there was no director or producer or camera uh, or location or actors or uh, craft service or any of those other things that can cost a lot of money and make making videos um, cost prohibitive. My last music video cost around two hundred and forty thousand dollars and this one cost maybe around thirty. So that's thirty dollars, by the way. No, no zeros after that. But in approaching it that way, the bar is higher. And is this video perfect? Perfect? No, it's not. You will see uh, AI artifacts. You will see some inconsistencies. And frankly, just you'll see some imperfections. But for me, I'm very proud of this video. I think it's um, a very enjoyable, uh, at times beautiful music video that very much tells the story that I had in my head. So um, let's pop on over to my browser and I'm going to walk you through the basic process that I used to get there. All right, so everything begins with a concept. And what you see in front of you is potentially the album cover of a yet to be released album of mine. The album itself is a alt bluegrass uh, album that combines bluegrass music with more contemporary alternative themes and sensibilities. Um, and the album was meant to capture the a, a mix of traditional and quirky. And I think that's all uh, present here where we have a man with no shoes, wearing jean shorts and a black t-shirt and a motorcycle helmet, inexplicably riding on the back of a buffalo in the Mojave Desert. I wanted my music video to complement that, to be consistent with that. I wanted to create 
uh, a real brand, just as I would if I was a record label or the art department of a record label um, about to release a more traditional album. The concept that quickly emerged was taking me to the Mojave Desert. I wanted to see a mix of performance footage. Uh, I wanted some accompaniment, so I included a fiddle player. I included buffaloes, and I wanted to really see a juxtaposition between life and death as we often see and sense and feel in the desert. I also love those old abandoned houses that we often see on drives through the deserts, and I wanted to imagine uh, a life that once called that home as we tour the ruins of this forgotten life. And I thought a lot of those themes ran nice parallels to the lyrics, and so that is what I set out to do. Now, the first thing I needed to do was create a seed image. What you're looking at here are a series of very quickly taken seed images. You know, you don't need to do that. This is just 45 seconds with uh, an iPhone. But what this does is it gets the AI much closer to our body type, our hair type, um, uh, the positions that we ultimately want. Essentially, it acts as a, a wireframe for our future seed images. Next thing you want to do is head on over to Midjourney. Once here, you would add your seed image. Once we've got that, we're going to open it up and grab the image location. Now I'm going to type imagine and enter and in the prompt field I'm going to add my image then I'm going to give it a relatively simple prompt like man in Mojave Desert if I wanted to see something specific I could say standing by old car or in front of old house um, or with Buffalo behind me but for now I want to start with man in Mojave Desert and I want the aspect ratio to be 16 by 9 and I prompt it accordingly. I am going to copy this prompt so I can use it several times and I'm going to hit enter. While that's going, I'm going to do it two more times. And now you can see that images are being created. Now what is happening is that Mid Journey is starting with a lot of noise and it is paring down that noise uh, and ultimately creating an image, much like someone who starts with a block of clay and creates a sculpture from that. Now we've got some options. You can see here that we've got some pretty weird stuff going on. Um, most of these images are the man turned around or the head nearly twisted off or some bad posture. So I can't use that. Um, here there's a little more potential again for some reason uh, in this batch it's just twisting my head around and doing some weird stuff there. But this looks interesting. Um, and let's look at our third batch. We've got Again, I think there's some potential here and, uh, you know, the rest of these are not particularly exciting. So I am going to upscale that image. We count from left to right and top to bottom. So this becomes one, two, three, four, and this is U2. So we scale that up. Now let's take a good look at it. So you can see we have a lot of similarities and that's where that seed image comes in handy. It takes a similar pose, often a mirror pose, as you can see here. The haircut's somewhat similar. The face structure's similar, but it's clearly not me, but it's a beautiful, very realistic uh, photograph um, that we could definitely use if we can make it look more like me. So the next step is to come here uh, and we're going to use a tool called Insight Face Swap that I've already added to my server and I'm going to type in save ID. I'm going to add a image of my face. I've got a collection of them here. I select that one. I give the, the image a name and now I come back to my image. I right click on it. Apps in Swapper. And now I have an image that looks much more like me. Now, just to compare the two, we've got this guy and we got this guy. This one doesn't look like me. That one would fool just about anyone. Now, is this the absolute best example of what's possible? No, but I would normally do this uh, maybe a dozen or two times until I had a few images that I was very happy with. But I don't hate this. This is very usable. So we're going to save this to my computer. We're going to come back to Discord, and now I'm using something called Pika Labs. Uh, I am going to type in create. We click add image. We add the image that we just created, and now we type our prompt. This might be slight wind in hair, cloud movement, and then a camera prompt. 
dash camera, pan left. And then I add a lengthy negative prompt to avoid too much morphing or fluctuation in motion or bad quality, etc. And then I copy all of this to my clipboard so I can do it several times while I wait and I hit enter. And then I do it two more times. And we now have three very similar videos. Let's take a look and see what we got. I think that's pretty great. Some nice hair movement. I think that's even better. So now we just download that. And if we're happy with that and we're happy with this look, we can begin editing. Um, and that's what I initially did. And I created a very realistic video like the footage that you see in front of you. But what it did is it created something that had a little too much of that uncanny valley effect where it was very realistic, but not quite realistic enough. And it frankly was slightly uncomfortable. So I wanted to change that. I went to Kyber and I added my video and I gave it a watercolor wash. For example, I want to create a video of a man in the video because I don't want it to change it in the Mojave Desert. No facial hair. For some reason with me, I just kind of wanted to take my little bit of scruff and turn it into a beard every time. Um, and I've uploaded the video and it's in the style of watercolor wash, soft blended colors that evoke a dreamy ethereal mood. And my thinking there was there's this tradition of desert watercolors and I thought that might be an appropriate and attractive effect to kind of take away some of that uncanny valley. So I come down to video settings. So I leave my transform at just two. I wanted to give it some of that morphing, um, get away from just how realistic it was. And then I click generate previews. Now we have four images to choose from. You can see that it's small, but you can see that it added facial hair. I click the one I like and I click create video. Now you can see our result here. Um, it's got a, a bit of movement. There's some of that frame morphing, uh, but it does have that watercolor effect and it's really attractive. But what happened? It doesn't look like me anymore. So I now go to a tool called deepswap.net. I swap my face. I upload that video. It asks me to choose a face. I already added my image and I click face swap. After about 10 seconds, we have me in a watercolor style in the Mojave Desert, looking frankly pretty good if I do say so myself. But there's one other glaring problem. There's a Pika Labs watermark. So we're gonna come to a tool called Any Eraser from Wondershare and media.io. We are going to uh, add our video we are going to come to the AI model and paint out the watermark and click start all. So there we are. You can see in the bottom right hand corner that the watermark is gone and we are ready to use this video. So now what I would do is repeat the process, creating all of the clips I need to tell my story. I would edit them together, but I would avoid adding transitions because we still need to add the lip syncing. Remember, we want performance footage. Um, and if you have those transitions, it's going to mess with uh, the lip sync process. I personally didn't have TV stems, so I used yet another tool called kits.ai. Kits.ai has a powerful suite of AI related tools but what I used here was their vocal separator. You simply upload your track and it separates the vocals from the audio, creating a music mix and a vocal mix. And I can use that vocal mix to create a nice clean lip sync because uh, I can do it with the music, but it creates a more subtle and more erratic lip sync when there is all that music uh, behind the vocal. Once I have extracted the vocal, I come over to a tool called Wave to Lip in Google Colab. Uh, I add my video, I add my audio, and then I click start crunching. Once it's done, I have a video that perfectly lip syncs the lyrics to the song, and I fly that back into my editor, replacing all of the clips of me previously not singing with clips of me singing. 
Then I render the final video and I take it to one more AI tool called Pixop that uses artificial intelligence to upscale your videos, turning them from lower quality, lower res videos into higher quality, high resolution videos. And the process was complete. Now, uh, I very much went down the rabbit hole of AI video creation using a huge array of tools. You absolutely don't need to do that. And if you want to keep it simple, there are many tools that you can use. I want want to just share the video with you now and see what you think. Without further ado, I am now going to play the video that I made and you can see what you think for yourself. Here goes. my breath making love to you was never second best I saw the world thrashing all around your face never really knowing it was always mesh and lace I'll stop the world and melt with you you've seen the difference and it's getting better all the time There's nothing you and I won't do I'll stop the world I'll stop the world and melt with you Dream of better lives The kind which never hate Dropped in the state Of imaginary grace I made a pilgrimage To save this human race Never comprehending the race that is long gone by. I'll stop the world and melt with you. You've seen the difference and it's getting better all the time. There's nothing you and I won't do. I'll stop the world. I'll stop the world and melt with you. Stop the world and melt with you I've seen some changes But it's getting better all the time There's nothing you and I won't do I'll stop the world I'll stop the world and melt with you I'll stop the world I'll stop the world and melt with you I'll stop the world You've seen the difference and it's getting better all the time There's nothing you and I won't do I'll stop the world and melt with you So there you go what do you think? That's my new music video, my version of Melt With You, originally by Modern English. Uh, and the entire video that you just watched was created using AI, um, an array of artificial intelligence tools, as I walked you through previously, to accomplish something that, frankly, I never would have been able to accomplish without those tools. Now, uh, I showed you all of that as an example of an AI workflow. And this is a concept I think you're going to be hearing more and more about. You're certainly gonna be hearing more about it from me um, because I think 
that is the touchstone or that's the concept that is going to allow us to integrate AI into our lives in meaningful ways. I've said this before, but I think there has been this sobering up period where all of this technology has hit consumers like you and me, uh, but people haven't exactly known what to do with it. There's sort of been this moment of it can do everything. So how, what do I do exactly? Um, and that is where my focus has been over the last nine months or so is developing these practical workflows like the one I just showed you for creating one particular type of music video using AI. But of course, AI can be used in nearly every facet of our everyday lives. My particular area of focus is developing ways that musicians can become more successful music marketers using AI. And that's exactly what I've done. And that is exactly what I'm going to be teaching in my upcoming workshop, the Musician's AI Toolkit. I share an array of workflows and prompts and tactics that you can apply to your career to become a more successful music marketer in less time and at less expense, allowing you to spend more time doing what you love doing, which is making music and less time doing the things we need to do to run our music businesses efficiently and effectively. If you would like to take part in this workshop, if you would like me to guide you through all of these workflows in depth and teach you about this emerging technology so that you have a true and solid grasp of how to use it, then join me on October 16th. Uh, the workshop is limited to just 200 people. If you'd like to ensure that you can get access, you should see a link below this video uh, that will allow you to sign up to the early bird list, and I will be sending an early invitation to those of you that are on that list. So. I definitely want to hear what you thought. Uh, did you like the video? Did you hate the video? Are you interested in learning how to use these kinds of tools to make your own music videos? Let me know what you think below in the comments. I'd certainly love to hear from you. And I hope to see some of you in the Musicians AI Toolkit members area on October 16th. Take care.